please welcome to the stage, me. Hi, my name is Michael Kenny, uh, and I really want to thank you all for being here. Uh, it's an honor to have the opportunity to present my thesis to you. Research is an imperative part of the design process, and I've spent the last year interviewing and engaging with numerous experts, from physical therapists and neurologists to game designers and architects. I've read many influential books, and I've built dozens of prototypes. As a matter of fact, I wanted to take a moment and present an interactive data gathering prototype that I have been developing. It's called a survey. <laughs> okay, now I want you to raise your right hand if you played games outside when you were a kid. Okay, pretty much everybody, yeah. Okay, you can put your hands down. Um, and who played games with friends? Raise your left hand. Okay, everybody except that guy. Um, <laughs> Who has played games this year? Raise your right hand. Okay. Now I want you to raise both hands if you played games this week. Okay. Uh, and now I'd like it if you would stand up if you're playing a game right now. <laughs> okay, every person in this theater should be standing because you are in fact playing a game. And you've just experienced what I am calling instigationism a thesis designed to incite activity in a sedentary population. So that whole buildup, that game, I actually borrowed that routine, borrowed that routine from Jill Violet, the CEO of Playworks. She used it in her TED Talk to illustrate the emotional and physical benefits of play. But I wanted to take her game and give it purpose, give it some function. So the game you just played was designed to instigate a specific action. You see, not only did you get all of the emotional benefits of play, but you also just did a few repetitions of side stretches. Of course, this isn't a gym replacement or a way to get the 65% of us who never use our gym memberships to actually go. No, it did something that is more immediate and more critical. It got us out of our seats and provoked us into physical movement. And these instigations are imperative because right now, one third of adults and four out of five adolescents are at increased risk of disease as a result of physical inactivity. That's because the average person sits for about 13 hours a day during our active periods and sleeps an average of eight hours each night. And a simple map mapping exercise reveals why. Time in traffic, at the desk, on the couch, the bar stool, the dinner table, these are all activities that keep you in your seat. Research has linked excessive sitting with a myriad of health problems, including increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and more. As Dr. James Levine of the Mayo Clinic so eloquently states, sitting is the new smoking. And it doesn't matter how much you exercise before or after work. Like smoking, there are serious risks in sitting for extended periods of time, and the only way to prevent this sitting disease is to quit. Now, I'm not suggesting that you set your couch on fire, but new health guidelines indicate that we should be getting up out of our chairs for 10 to 12 minutes every few hours. Today, I would like to present three business models designed to instigate short sequences of physical activity in our work, home, and social lives. During my investigation into sedentary behavior in the workplace, I came across this interesting statistic. Jobs requiring moderate physical activity, which accounted for 50% of the la labor market in 1960, have plummeted to just 20%. The remaining 80% of jobs are sedentary or require only light physical activity. To understand this problem better, I developed several proto-personas based on user research and surveys and discovered that our office and work environments are actually designed to promote sedentary behavior. I had the opportunity to work with Stephen Dean of Prehype to start sketching ideas for a service-based business model that would address this issue and developed Level Up, social games for the office space. Level Up is a social gaming service that instigates office employees to get out of their chair and engage in physical activity for 10 minute intervals throughout the day. Here's how it works.
Once your company signs up for a monthly plan, Level Up provides each employee with an ergonomic desk riser that integrates depth sensing camera and a pair of resistance bands. The depth sensing camera turns the user's body into an input that controls a suite of simple yet challenging arcade style games. Think Joust or Centipede or Galaga. In order to play, the employee must stand and move. Employees can play solo games or they can use our Slack plugin to challenge other employees to engage in multiplayer mode. A scoreboard system allows businesses to collect employee health analytics while leveraging the principles of gamification to drive adoption and encourage healthy habits. Through partnerships with insurance providers, Level Up can be sold to employers that do not currently offer workplace wellness programs as a way to reduce insurance premiums. I believe that ideas like Level Up will transform the current sedentary workplace culture into one of active play. But not everyone works at a desk, and even though it doesn't feel this way, most of our time is spent at home. I've always wanted to find an opportunity to design for home fitness, and this last summer, I took the chance to pitch a fitness idea at a 24-hour VR hackathon and led a team in creating a minimum viable product using motion capture and 3D avatars. This laid the foundation to develop a business plan that could disrupt the in-home fitness industry. Welcome to New Dimensions. In-home fitness is a $265 billion industry, but the physical media and one-off app model has become stale. People want escapist features and they want variety. New Dimensions is an on-demand fitness content platform, basically the Netflix of fitness VR. Imagine you are a new parent taking care of your sick child and as much as you need a break and some exercise, you can't leave the house. Luckily, you have new dimensions. With the headset on, you begin by selecting your instructor and type of fitness, the level of intensity, and what exotic location you want to experience. Now I encourage you to check out my prospectus book for a full rundown of the business plan, including marketing strategies that rely on licensing partnerships with the National Park Service and celebrity fitness gurus like Jillian Michaels and Nicole Chaplin, or branded content opportunities for fitness apparel companies like Nike. But for now, I wanna take a step back from that and address a question that I get asked most often. Can you actually exercise in VR? Well, it depends on the quality of your head-mounted display, but the reality is that people have been dancing with head adornments for tens of thousands of years. That's a lot of user testing. <laughs> However, I wanted to avoid making assumptions, so I built and tested several prototypes and the initial Sorry, feedback yeah, is extremely right. positive. But the thing that, about this project that is the most feasible and most accessible is also the thing that bothered me the most, the user interface. The current trend in UX is to create rules or very specific detailed pattern sets for UI. For example, Google's material design. Now I agree that for screen-based technology, breaking these rules can lead to usability issues and low adoption rates. However, I don't believe that we should extrapolate touch-based interaction into the space of emerging technologies such as HoloLens or Leap Motion or Connect, because these technologies are primed for multimodal gestures that can take advantage of our entire range of motion, not just our fingertips. In designing instigationisms for our social lives, I took the opportunity to examine the future of gesture-based UI. First of all, we should give ourselves some credit when it comes to adopting new modes of interaction. In the relatively brief history of interaction design, we have adapted to a wide range of input models, from the birth of the mouse to T9 texting to swipe to unlock. Our current technology is hurting our bodies. So why not take this opportunity to develop a thoughtful, intentional, and physically productive user interface for these emerging technologies? Look, developers are spending millions of dollars to develop physical therapy games. But why make physical therapy a game when we can make a game physical therapy? I know that sounds really confusing, but bear with me. We should not be developing interactions like the HoloLens tap that most likely will result in a trip to the doctor when we can mine a library of beneficial movements from the field of physiotherapy. We could develop interaction patterns that instigate the entire population into performing physically productive movements whenever they are in digital space. So once again, I turned to the universal appeal of classic arcade games and prototyped 
a game that incorporated shoulder abduction and adduction exercises as a kind of Trojan horse to deliver this physically productive UI. Introducing twin guns. <laughs> you start with a full repetition to confirm your intent to play, and during gameplay, the spaceships follow the or orientation of the arms. So the right arm controls the right ship, and the left arm controls the left ship. And both arms together create twin guns. <laughs> but why stop there? We could mash the mechanics of space invaders with side lunges, or joust with hip flexor stretches, or frogger with squat jumps. But I wanted to get this into the hands of people who dip typically don't play video games. We need mass adoption. So I developed The Gate, a modern update on the arcade cabinet that delivers a physically active arcade game. Housed in a form that is inspired by the retro look of the phonograph matched with the modern sensibilities of Dieter Ram's L2 loudspeaker. It's meant to sit side by side with less physically active yet very popular bar games such as Big Buck Hunter or Golden Tee or Pinball. The Gate, coming soon to a bar near you. I encourage you to come and engage with this project and explore the future of of user interface design at Industry City during this year's New York Design Week. Thank you all so much. I want to thank Alan and the Products of Design and the SVA community for giving me this absolutely amazing opportunity. And I want to thank my colleagues who are inspiring and endlessly clever. And a special thanks to my friends and family for all the amazing support. Goodbye, New York. So you said that uh, sitting is the new smoking. So let's get on these bar stools and <laughs> smoke our brains out. <laughs> yes. All right, so thank you first for being the voice of today. Oh, thank you. And My we pleasure. do have to have some audience participation. Does anyone have a phrase that they would like Michael Kenny to utter? <laughs> our answering service, please. Our answering service, please. Oh. Oh, OK. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Oh, you have reached Ice Over Cell. You're welcome. Should we leave a message? Press nine. <laughs> All right, good. Um, you have a, I mean, you're really interested in VR, and you've always been interested in VR. And I see a really interesting place between the headsets, which I think would actually be an amazing business, uh, and the arcade, the hardware. Um, I like the fact that they're separate things. I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, why don't you make them the same thing? Can you talk about some of, because you know, in your book you, you have a lot of business modeling. Can you talk about ways that they are distinct? Uh, and maybe a little bit about where you see yourself five years from now or even three years from now if you can develop uh, one or two or three of these. Yeah, I'm, I, I had always been really interested in VR, um, but also the explorations of augmented reality and mixed reality, which I think a lot of people in the industry would say will really be the future. I think there's something valuable about the full immersion of VR, but it definitely limits the capabilities in terms of usefulness for the general population. But for things like the New Dimensions Fitness app, it's, it's great because it's, it offers a way to escape your immediate reality. Um, so that's one of the, the prime value pro propositions for VR. Um, in terms of other gesture-based UI, like the Kinect, I think that there is going to be an integration with that and some kind of AR mixed reality future. And the, and the gel there is really going to be this gesture-based user interface and the patterns that we start to create that will, um, that will uh, travel across all of those mediums. I think today that was the most persuasive part for me. Um, as opposed to learning new gestures, literally inventing as designers new gestures, taking the gestures that, you know, well, we've evolved with, that we're not doing anymore, that are literally good for us, yeah. and making those the inputs. Yeah. This is a, I don't know, it seems like a really huge idea to me. Yeah, I was, um, I had been working on that project. I was making, I was actually, you know, I, w I was complaining about physical therapy games. I was actually making one. And while I was doing that, it was about four in the morning, I had this aha moment where I, where I thought, you know, really we could turn every interaction, even the meta level interactions of navigation and, and selection into productive, physically productive user interface. And, and I think it's a, a, a really great idea. Really great. There's another understood gesture that we should do right now, now that we've finished our smoke, which is just putting it out. Yeah. 
Okay. Me... Thank you, Michael. Yeah, thank you.